And now, finally, we have all of the technical results in hand that we need in order to express the Kalman filter. Now we can give the formulae for it. Again, the Kalman filter predicts, then measures, then fuses using the special properties of Gaussian densities. So we start off with an expectation and a covariance matrix, E0 and V0. We feed that into a state model. That state model, F, gives us an updated expectation, EP. DF, its derivative, gives us a predicted covariance matrix, VP. But that's not all, because after the prediction, we then measure what we really got. That gives us an expectation EM and a covariance VM. Now, how do we reconcile what was predicted and what was measured? We fuse them together, multiplying and then rescaling in order to get a new expectation EM. F. This is quantity VP plus VM inverse pre-multiplied by VM post-multiplied by EP plus VP plus VM inverse pre-multiplied by VP and then post-multiplied by EM. That is our fused expectation. Our fused covariance matrix VF is quantity VP plus VM inverse pre-multiplied by VM, post-multiplied by VP. Then the critical step is the feedback. We take that fused expectation and covariance and start all over again. Feed that back into the state model, measure it again, fuse it again. That continual updating is the key to how a filtering method works. That is how the Kalman filter operates. Now, does this stuff really get used in practice? Oh yes, it is so incredibly important. The Kalman filter was used way back in the Apollo missions, back in the 20th century, in order to get to the moon and back safely. It's not an exaggeration to say that the Kalman filter was one of the critical pieces in why this worked. And now fusion is all over the place in computer vision, in robotics, in machine learning, in medical imaging applications, all kinds of things use the Kalman filter. And now it's bonus time. There is so much more that one could say about fusion, filtering, tracking, all these different sorts of things. Now, the Kalman filter as I have presented it is particularly simplified. If you look up the formulae online in a book, you're probably going to see something that is a little more complicated looking. This is because it's often done in a certain measurement space. Don't worry about it. Fall back to the simple. And if you're in engineering and you wind up seeing this again, as you likely will, then take some time and learn the more complicated version using what we've covered as a first approach. In general, don't be intimidated when you see really complicated formulae. There's probably something simple underlying it. In fact, the Kalman filter is kind of too simple for a lot of contemporary applications, and there's so much more that one could do with modern fusion techniques. Now, as a last admonition, let me say that there's more to life than Gaussians. Gaussians are great. We've seen just how useful they are in certain contexts, but they are not universally applicable. Really important class. They've got really nice properties, but there are other probability densities out there, and sometimes they're the ones that you need for a particular situation.